brother went and got me a big hot cherry pie. I tell you, it pays the hint. <laughs> what about that, buddy? Let me have them keys. There he is. See? Looks like cherry pie's kind of favorite. <laughs> it's really good. Just like I said about when you eat cherry pie, now sometimes you run into a seed. Now, I don't, I don't throw the pie away. I just throw the seed away and keep on eating cherry pie. That's what I want you to do about these messages. When you run, go right along with me, when you hit something, you can't, uh, you can't digest it just right. Well, I'm, or just uh, don't throw the whole thing away. Just throw that part away, the seed, and just keep on eating pie. <laughs> Until I'm, Amen. Amen. When you, you like chicken, fried chicken, nearly everybody does. Well, then, when you eat chicken, you hit the bone, you don't throw the chicken away. You just throw the bone away. Isn't that right, Pat? <laughs> just throw the bone away. Keep on eating chicken. Well, we're happy because that we can eat food that doesn't have a bone or seed in it. Amen. Wafers came down from heaven called manna, covered all over with the sweetness of heaven. You know, I believe it was the David one time said it tastes like honey in the rock. Amen. I believe the poet said it was honey in the rock. Oh, my brother, have you tasted, uh, uh, see, the light tastes like honey in the rock? Honey in the rock, my brother, that's the way it is. Now, um, you know, I, I wondered one time what that meant, honey in the rock. And I thought, well, it's perhaps they found a beehive one time in the rock. But to come to run it down, I got a little inspiration on it. I, well, not that time I was looking for it, but later on. I found out that each one of them shepherds that had sheep, there's something about, you know, our bodies are made up out of the dust of the earth. Every, every living thing come from the earth. And there was, uh, these shepherds uh, uh, believed that lime helped the sheep when it would have uh, something wrong with it, you know, sick or something. Other they wanted to lick on a rock. You've seen sheep do that, go lick on the rock. And they'd get the sheep to lick on the rock, they'd pour some honey on the rock. And then the sheep would go to licking the honey and they get the rock too, you see. <laughs> We're licking the honey. Oh, we got a whole script bag full of honey here. We'll put it on the rock, not on any church. On the rock, Christ Jesus, hey, hey, the sheep hey, go to licking now. And you, you sure get well right away. <laughs> all the sin troubles will be gone away when you lick, lick the rock. That's all you have to do. Something about a rock that's got healing to it. Amen. Healing. Days gone by before they had the rabies shots. They used to have what they call the mad stone. When a person gets bit by a mad dog, well, they put him on this mad stone. And now if the mad stone, if he stuck to the mad stone, he got well. If it didn't stick, then the patient is too far advanced that the, it would die. So that's the way it is. They're the worst uh, bite that I know of is not a mad dog, but the devil. Amen. And we got a stone for that. Amen. <laughs> Rock of ages. Amen. Just hold on to it. As long as you hold on, you'll get well. Hallelujah. Don't never turn loose and back up. Just keep on holding on. Amen. Stick to it. And, and you'll, you'll get all right. Now, before we go into our night's lesson, and, and we want to stand just a moment, if we can, for a word of prayer. <laughs> You're not Robert Doherty's sister, are you, here? She called me yesterday, I believe it was, and was talking about she wanted prayer. And I, I didn't know where you looked something like her. I didn't know where you was her or not. I've seen you here last evening. Now, how many wants to be remembered before God or wants God to remember you rather? Just Our Heavenly Father is, as our little song leader up in Chicago, you sing, Remember Me When Tears Are Falling Down. Lord, remember me now, in the hour of death, and the, all down through life, we want you to remember us, Lord. Remember us, not as sinners, as what we are, but we want you to remember us as confessed Christians, that we've accepted Jesus Christ, thy Son and our Savior, for our, uh, to be our propitiation for our sins, that we know that that's the only only chance that we have, the only road, the only means of salvation is not through any church or through any other uh, mechanical device it is or any organization, but through Jesus Christ and Him alone. So we approach in His name tonight asking that You'll bless us as we congregate ourselves together. 
to study thy word and to know what you have for us in store for tonight, that we might build up our, our spiritual bodies to a lively church, a church where you could live and walk in and feel comfortable walking among your people, Amen. telling us what to do and know that we'd do it right away. And we love you, Father, but we know we're not quite in condition yet that you could speak to us just like you wished to. So we pray that you'll circumcise, that is, cut off all this foolishness, all the surplus flesh away from us tonight, that we might be wholly uh, dedicated to thee, that thou could use us at any time. We pray at that time will be tonight, Father, that you'll use Amen. us to bring forth these nuggets out of the Bible and polish them off and let the people see the reflection of Christ in this great church age. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we've had the church ages now on down until tonight's church age is the sixth church age. Tomorrow night, finishing up the church ages, taking one each night, Monday through Sunday. And tonight, the church age is called the Philadelphian church age. And the star or the, the messenger, angel messenger to that church age, we believe solemnly with all of our heart to be John Wesley. The church age began at 1750 when the Lutheran church age went out and lasted up to somewhere in 1900, around 1906 AD, the Wesleyan church age. And then issued in from that to Lady Osea. Now, the age is the age of church age of brotherly love, the great missionary age, and the open door age. And the reward was a, a pillar, made a pillar, and the revelation of three names the name of God. The name of city of God, God's new name, is a revelation that was given to this church, this age. And now, the church, this age begins in Revelation 3, 7, uh, down to the 13th verse, and 13th verse inclusive. Revelations 3, uh, 7 to 13. Now, we've been... Uh, reviewing these a little bit at night time, going back and the church age first was the Ephesian church age. Can anybody say right off who the angel or the light was, minister of that church age? Paul, the Ephesus church age, AD 55 to 170. The reason I picked up 55, that's when he started his missionary journey. It was then when he established the Ephesian church and the, and the different churches along there. All right, the second church age was the Smyrna. Can anyone remember what the angel of that church age was in the class? Irenaeus is right. All right, it was 170 to 312. The third church age was the Pergamos church age. Can anybody remember in the class who was the saint of that uh, church age? St. Martin. Martin is right. From 312 to 606. And then the next church age was Thyatira. Uh, can anybody remember the saint and the messenger, angel of that age? Columbia. Columbia is right. And that's 606 to 515. The next was Sardis church age, which was last night. And anybody, of course, you know what the angel of that church age was? Remember? Martin Luther. And then his was 1520 on to 1750. And tonight we're on uh, the Philadelphian church age, which is John Wesley, the messenger of that day, from 1750 to 1906 A.D. And it's the age of brotherly love. Now we find out that each one of these churches, church ages, express the characteristic of that church. Uh, it told what the church was and the characters of the church, the characteristic, rather, of the church. Now, last night was Martin Luther. I, in these, I am 
the reason I'm getting this and the boys are putting it on tape, I'm studying all day long, and you say all day long on just what little history you give here? No, the historical points will go in the book. See, this year I'm reason to get here is to get these things pulled out by the inspiration from the four you people where we gathered together to get the inspirational part of it. The history, I can read that out of the book. But this is where I'm looking for the inspiration. Then we pick it up from the tape. Then we got the, the we got in the book. Then we'll have both the historical data of it and also the inspiration of the Holy Spirit has given us while we're together here. This heavenly place is in Christ Jesus. And I believe it ought to make a striking little commentary um, on these church ages. And the Lord grant His blessings to it. Now, the last night, the church age, the being the Sardis church age, was really, in the Greek, was called the escape one, but I believe in the English translation, uh, it is dead. Now, it was both a dead church and an escaped one, because it was a church that had died under the papal reign in the 1500 there, 1520, of the of the great papal reign, which we call the Dark Ages, where uh, Christianity was at the lowest ebb it ever has been or ever will be. Even in the Laodicean church age. Now, these, one of the striking things I'll keep bearing on your mind, that these church ages start, and whatever is in that one church age, it goes all the way down through every church age, and each one of the church ages lap over one another. If you study the history close with the book, you'll find out it's like laps, like this, laying over each other. And one church age is going out, and the angel that comes in between there is to call back that church to the faith that it once lost. Um, it's always been... Look at Jude, the last book in the Bible. See, until you hit the revelation there. Jude said... Uh, I wrote unto, wrote unto you that you might earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Amen. Lapping over between the apostles and the coming of the revelation because most apostles were dead then. See? was gone on one living at that time. That was St. John the Divine, which is the revelator, the writer. I got the revelation from the angel of the Lord to write the book of Revelations. Now, see the lap over one another. So now, you, I guess you've noticed that and picked it up, coming down, as I've been mentioning, how that even here in the, the uh, Sardis age, that was the marriage age. Actually, the church never really come into full existence until Thyatira. But it got married in Sardis, and Sardis means um, uh, being a, a marriage. Now, now... If you notice it, Mary here and then lapped over into that age there. And you notice Luther last night come out with a dead name, a name of dead, and then escape one. See, it had the dead church from back here and the escaping of the little remnant that was brought out in this age here. And tonight, as we're ending up the Philadelphian age, it's bringing in the beginning of the Laodicean age. Then tomorrow night, when it goes out of the just at the end, you notice the angel appears right at the end time. And just at the end time, to rebuke the church for losing its first love and how it's got away from God like they did down through there. The ages. And at that time, the rapture comes to take the church home. The church goes up Amen. just at the time of the message. Amen. And so we are, we are nearing that age now. Did you get that? All right, see, all right. See this at the time? The... The angel of the church, the messenger of the age, comes in to rebuke them for losing their first love, bring, trying to bring them back. Same thing the messenger does tonight. The angel messenger comes back to rebuke them, each age like that, for what they had done. So that makes a lap over in each one of the church ages. is lap right over one another like that. It's like climbing up a step. It's laying in laps like that, going up. Now, I got just a short piece of history here on the messenger for tonight of the, uh, John Wesley. John Wesley was a star of the age. 
And um, he was born on June the 17th, 1703. In Epworth Rectory, England. He was the 15th child of 19... John and Suzanne Wesley, father and mother. Father, a preacher. Mother, a consecrated saint. Although with 19 children to take care of, she found much time through her busy day to teach her children Bible lessons and Bible stories and pray for them. That's what made the boys what they were. The great songwriter, Charles, his brother, who gave the world some of the most inspiring songs we've ever had. John, an associate of George Whitefield. John, John Wesley and George, George Whitefield was really the first founder of this Methodist, or the sanctification. John rose up early every morning. For 60 years, he got up every morning at 4 o'clock. That's one thing the church is falling from. Got up every morning at 4 o'clock and preached at 5 a.m. for 50 years straight. And sometimes he preached from two to four times a day. It is said by people of England that he rode a horse 4,500 English miles every year to preach the gospel. 4,500 miles on a... That's English miles. You know, they're longer than ours. To preach the gospel. Many books of his was wrote of slander about him in his day. Slandering him, making fun of him. But they've long been forgotten now. So as their authors. You can't do it against the child of God and get by. You just, you just fight in the air. God's going to take him right on through anyhow. He was called a Methodist because of his methods of doing things. It is said in his lifetime that he preached more than 40,000 sermons. Think of that. 40,000 sermons. Soon after his going away in 1791, the Methodist denomination took its roots in the world and started the Methodist church. Then, of course, as very many more were in at the time. Now, if we notice the salute to this church as we're going to start now on the seventh verse, the messenger of Philadelphia, the true church, in the uh, true church in the professing church. It was a true church in the professing. To the angel of the church of Philadelphia. Right. I've called your attention to the lapping over each one now. Now you'll get here the angel if you watch the way he brought in the age of the Methodist age. Lapping on him run over into a little bit of the Philadelphian. Or to the Lady Ocean, Pentecostal age. Then tomorrow night the Pentecostal messenger comes back to rebuke these for falling just as this age rebuked them from falling back here in Sardis, the Lutheran age, the lap over. Brotherly love. It was a great age of missionaries and missions. The world has never seen the time. It even goes over into our time now that when the world ever seen such a time of missionaries everywhere in the last well, I'd say the last 150 years it's been one of the most outstanding times of world history for missionaries getting into all parts of the world with the gospel it has been as far as literally as literally just going sending the message of the gospel on paper and tracts and books and so forth the gospel has long ago went to every nation under the heavens Long ago. So you see, that goes to prove that that wasn't what Jesus is talking about. He never said go into all the world and make Bible schools. 
Neither did say go into all the world and uh, pass out literature. Those things are fine. But his commission to the church was going to all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. And the gospel is not altogether the word, but it's making the word come to life. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus said immediately, these signs shall follow them that believe. You know, Mark 16, his last, his last mission to the church was, These signs shall follow them that believe. His first uh, commission to the church in Matthew the 10th chapter was, Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils as freely as you have received, freely give. And his last message to the church was, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Is it strange that many cut off that part there? And is a conjunction that ties your sentence together. See? Now, he said, many uh, ministers will say, go preach the gospel. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them shall follow them them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. If they take up serpents or drink a deadly thing, it will not harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Signs of the living God moving among the people. All how far now? To all the world. You get it? Amen. All the world. So therefore, when I say that the Pentecostal message, not the Pentecostal organization, now the Pentecostal message is the only true message from God. Amen. Now look, Mark 16, if you're reading it there, all right, right here, Jesus commissioned his church, go into all the world, preach the gospel. These signs, speaking in tongues, healing the sick, performing miracles, Amen. will last to how far? All the world? How many? To every creature. Amen. That's all the way down to the end here. Amen. To the consummation. All right? These signs shall follow just this church. Them that believe in all the world. Amen. Amen. All the world to every creature, these signs shall follow. Them, not this, them that believe. Yes, amen. So it's a Pentecostal church. Amen. Now, we have to, in this age, right here where we're at tonight, on the Philadelphian, P H I L, the Philadelphian church age, in that age there, evangelized and has missionary all the complete world with literature. Jesus said, when this gospel is preached, this gospel Amen. is preached to all the world for our witness unto me, then the end shall be. Amen. Amen. Well, then, if that was what he's taught about, spreading out literature, sending out missionaries with reading, writing, arithmetic, and passing out tracts, and making people shake hands and believe that there is a God, if that's all it was, then he's far past his coming. Amen. So it shows... That the gospel, Paul said the gospel didn't come in word only, but through power Amen. and manifestation Amen. of Amen. the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. Then when Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, he said, go into all the world and demonstrate. Amen. Oh, I like that. Amen. Demonstrate the power Amen. of the gospel. Taking the word that what it says and show the people what it says and then make it manifest to them. Amen. Oh, that's the way that proves it. Amen. Oh, when great Marsh Reedhead standing there at my room that day, president of Sudan Missions, the biggest in the world, when he said, Brother Branham, you being a Baptist, you all know what's truth. I said, the Bible is the truth. And he said, well, he said, what's these Pentecostals got? I said, the Holy Ghost. See? And so he said, uh, oh, I've seen him tear up the furniture and kick over the stuff. I said, yep. The only thing it is is you guys hold yourself back and isolate yourself away from them. 
they got plenty of steam, they'd make the wheel roll and do something, but they'd blow it all out the whistle, you see. I said, if they just put it down here, they'd have signs, wonders, and miracles and everything. But they don't know what to do with it. It's got to go somewhere, so they just, just scream it out. <laughs> blow it out. Mm, I'd rather be blowing it out and holding it and not have any steam to blow out. Like <laughs> Like the old fellow used to say, I'd rather be afraid of a little wild, I'd rather have a little wildfire than have no fire at all. <laughs> the trouble of today, we try to paint a fire. Yeah. Say, you know, way back in the days of Pentecost, it did this. Now, what good does it do to show a freezing man that's freezing to death a painted fire? Amen. It ain't going to help him a bit. <laughs> no, you've got, he's got to have the fire himself. Yeah. And if there's a power of God that makes the Pentecostals uh, work for the Lord and do the works and signs that they did if you'll not just paint the picture but bring the picture in reality to them they'll get the same experience the same salvation seal their own testimony the way they did Amen. but you got to get it to them you got to not place it back in some other generation but bring it up here now we find out that this age of brotherly love was a great missionary age Jesus said unto all the world and to every creature, and these signs shall follow. Yeah. Now, as we've come down through the history and through the Bible, I want to ask you, hasn't each night we read in the Bible here what Jesus told John would happen? And right here we took history and proved that it did happen. Amen. Just exactly. Amen. That's the reason I had such a time searching out these these men to see where that God's servant was that carried this message right on through. But he was there. He was there just as the Bible said. Kept the message just like from the beginning. Never a fool with it. And then we see it was almost stamped out. And he called that same age a dead age, dark, so forth. And then it come out just a little light and then a little more strength. And then went into the Pentecostal real experience again right at the end time. And then the bride caught away. And away it went, and the tribulation set back in again. All right, the great tribulation, which is coming up before all the world. Now, the great missionary age, brotherly love, the age of missions. Let me just name to you some of the great men, and then I just wrote their names down here. John Wesley, George Whitfield, uh, Whitefield, he was about 1739. Charles G. Finney, Dwight Moody. William Carey, the great missionary, went to India in 1773. David Livingston to South Africa. See, all those, some of those great men, just, I got names of plenty of them here, great men, that lived in that brotherly love. That the black man, the white man, the brown man, the yellow man, all the walls is broke down, and these men went out into the mission fields. Brotherly love. Stretching out a hand to all nations everywhere. And it's opened up to them that they could go. Another open door age. Because they couldn't, before that, they couldn't have done it. The papal and, and papistry of Rome and so forth had also closed up to they couldn't go. But in that age, the doors was open because they said it was an open door age. They opened up many doors during that age. The door to the gospel, the door to the mission fields, the, the, the door back to Christ. And everything was opened up during that age. And you can see what they did. Their brethren done a great job out of it. And from John Wesley, the star, after the Sardis age, after he come over, wake them up from the Sardis age, uh, for the past 150 years, great missionaries, like of no other time or age before, has covered the entire earth. Think of that. Every nation under the heavens has heard the word. It completed many, many, many years ago. See? But not the gospel. Amen. Just the word. The letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. See? When I stood in South Africa, there on the platform that day and seen there was thousands times thousands setting out there Mohammedans. And I met one Mohammedan missionary. And this Mohammedan missionary said, Oh, for that precious soul... Now that man had been over there for years and years and had turned one Mohammedan to Christ because the Mohammedan sprung from the Medes of Persians and their laws does not change or neither does it alter. 
When they're a Mohammedan, they're a Mohammedan for all times. So there they had that one soul this brother was talking about. Stand out there at the yard of Victoria, the capital of South Africa. That's up in the, in the Free State. The Free State, Orange State, and over in the Transvaal. And we went from there all down into Cape Town and Bloemfontein. And through that, we come back up to Grimstown, East London. And then in to, um, uh, back into Johannesburg again. As we left um, uh, okay. Cape Town and come up the coast. All right, the last town we went to was Durban, where we gathered most of the natives. There's 150, 200,000 natives sitting out there at Mohammedans. Natives, we had, they had to take for weeks across the, the racetrack, far bigger than Churchill Downs, second biggest in the world. London's got the largest, South Africa and Churchill Downs. <laughs> then they had fences because they had tribal war. And the police, two or three hundred uh, guards stand out there uh, uh, driving each one of the tribes into their fences so they wouldn't fight one another, disarm them with their spears and essigards and so forth that they packed. <coughs> Sitting on the ground there, one looking through the fence at the other in tribal wars. Their chiefs up patting them on them. somebody with a big fan fanning them like that. And the queens, the queen of Rhodesia come down with uh, 27 carloads or trained or coaches full of people from Rhodesia to attend the meeting. And um, uh, a special train came down. The Lord was doing great things, great marvels and signs. And what did we find? Sidney Smith, the mayor of Durban, going out that day. I said, what's that uh, fella, uh, uh, that little tag on his neck around, uh, uh, colored man, as we would call it here, the Negro race? That's what I was there to preach to. And many of them wore no clothes at all, not a thing, men or women. So he had an idol in his arm, he had a little tag on his neck. I said, what are they um, tags on their neck for? He said, they're Christian. I said, Christian? With an idol in his hand? He said, well, now, Brother Branham, I, he's a shun guy. I said, I can speak his language. I said, we'll just drive up there and you talk to him, call him anything you want to. Just talk like he's going to ask him any questions. I'll ask him and I'll tell you back what he said. So I said, uh, how do you do, Thomas? And I called him Thomas because I thought that was a good fitting name. And um, I said, uh, I said, how, how do you do, Thomas? And um, he looked at me and I said, uh, uh, are you a Christian? Yes, he, he was a Christian. And I said, uh, oh, of course, he didn't know me. He'd never, none of them never seen us yet. So I said, uh, what you doing with that idol? He, oh, his, his, his father packed it. See, it was, it was God. See? And I said, um, did, uh, your father packed it. I said, well, that, that's no reason for you to pack it. You're a Christian. You ought to pack it. He said, well, one day the lion got after his father. And he built up a little fire and said the prayer the witch doctor told him over this idol. And the idol run the lion away. Uh, animals kill a lot of them there. And, he, and I said, look. Uh, it, it wasn't the prayer that the witch doctor told you. It was the fire that run the line away. I said, the line sprayed a fire. And I said, as a Christian, Thomas, you shouldn't pack that. You should have nothing to do with it. And he said, uh, oh, well, he said, if Amalia, that's the unseen force, our God, that we can't see. So, Amalia means something, a force like the wind. said, if, if Amalia fails, this won't. So you pack them both. The one don't work, the other will. <laughs> Now, that's the strength of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, my. But then that afternoon when the Holy Spirit came down at the meeting, the racetrack, and re began to reveal the secrets of the heart. After I took the Scripture, about an hour, where it really take me 15 minutes, because they had 15 different interpreters for it to go through. So I, I'd speak like Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and this is a glue, 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 and this like it. All meant Jesus Christ, the Son of God, interpreters. I'd have to jot down what I said last. I wouldn't know where it was at. And then wait till he got through, and then when he got back, I said, Now the missionary told you of a Jesus that come to save you. You can see him looking one another, you know, different tribes all the way up and down like that. I said, the missionary told you that. But did that missionary, in reading this book, did you see that where he was a great healer and said that he would live down through the age and the people till he come again? Works that I do shall you also. 
you that's ever accepted Christ as your Savior, with those tags on, would you like to see Jesus come back up here today and walk down through the people and do the same thing He did when He was here on earth? Oh, all of them, sure. They wanted to see that, you see. They wanted that. I said, then, if He will do it, use us here to do the same thing that He did when He was here on earth, would you believe His Word? Oh, sure. The, the Mohammed sitting out there. The first, second person on the platform was the Mohammedan woman. The Holy Spirit speaking, I said to the woman myself, I said, now, you know I don't know you. I can't even speak your language. And she admitted that. She had the red dot right in between her eyes here, which meant she was the third bread in the Mohammed. So I said, well, now, for healing you, I cannot heal you. But I said, did you understand the, what I said this afternoon in the message? And she, uh, uh, she talked back to the Mohammed interpreter, at, uh, she, the Indian, what she was. She said, yes, she understood. She had read the New Testament. Oh, well. Mm-hmm. See, they believe in God, too. They're the seed of Abraham also. See? But uh, said that she believed in God, but she believed Muhammad was his prophet, and we believe Jesus was his son. See? So um, she said, uh, oh, she, uh, she believed God. And I said, then, if you know the Old Testament and know what God was in the man gone by and the age is gone, then Jesus, one that we call the Christ, was to be the God prophet. He they killed him. You think they didn't. Because you said he got on a white horse and rode away. That's what you're taught by your priest. That he never was killed. Now, he died a normal death somewhere else years later. I said, you believe that. But this Jesus, according to the New Testament, he died and rose again and sent his spirit back on his church. Now you got him. That's exactly what that Mohammed challenged Billy Graham about. See? Same thing. Same principle. I said, now, if Mohammed never made you all any promises, but Jesus made us a promise that the same works that he did, we'd do also. I remember he said in St. John 5, 19, I do nothing till the Father shows me. I said, now, if Jesus will come and show me what your trouble is or what you're here for, tell you what your outcome was, what your past was, and what your future will be, and if He can tell you what your future, your past was, surely you'll believe what the future will be. She said, that's true, see, to the interpreter. And I said, all right, may He do it. And all them Mohammed just raising up, watching, you know and when the Holy Spirit said, Your husband, short, heavy set man, with a black mustache, he was at a doctor about three days ago, said, You got two children, he gave you a female examination, he said, You had a cyst on the womb. She looked down, bowed her head, she said, That is true. And I said, Now, if you read the New Testament, is that why Jesus Christ, who told the woman at the well, that is true. And uh, I said, well, why did you come to me as a Christian? Why didn't you go to your Mohammedan prophet? She said, I think you can help me. Now I said, I can't help you, but if you'll accept this Jesus who is here now, who knows your life and knows all about you, he'll help you. She said, I accept Jesus as my Savior. That did it. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> 10,000 Mohammeds come to Christ that afternoon. Amen. See? About 30 years on the mission field and it turned one over by literature where in five minutes' time 10,000 come by the gospel being made manifest. Amen. God never did tell us to build churches. Amen. Never did tell us to make schools. They're all right. Hospitals and so forth. God knows we need them in this program. But the commission of the church is to preach the gospel. <clears throat> but we passed out tracts literature. From Asbury, this fine little place up here, which God bless them people. That little Methodist college up here at Wilmore, Kentucky, is one of the finest spiritual little places in the world, I suppose, at this time. They're fine people. And I was coming down out of, uh, I forget, this Rhodesia, but I don't know the name of the town. Billy, can you remember? Salisbury, that's right. New Salisbury. He's my memory. Uh, New Salisbury, Rhodesia. And we was coming down out of Rhodesia, and I seen an American passport when we was boarding plane, a boy and three girls. And I said, uh, walked up to him, I said, uh, hello there. I said, I see you have an American passport. He said, you speak English? I said, yes. I said, I, I am an American. He said, well, that's fine. I said, uh, 
Are you traveling? He said, no, we are missionaries. I said, oh, how nice. I said, sure, glad uh, to get to meet you. And I said, where are you from? What church? Or are you with an organization or just free? He said, no, we're a Methodist. We're from Wilmore, Kentucky. I said, it's in my backyard almost. No, I said, he said, you wouldn't have to be that Brother Branham up here. I said, yes, sir, that's right. And um, that, that cured him right there. See, he wouldn't say no more. And uh, I seen the attitude he take and looked over them girls. They looked at one another like that. I said, just a moment, son. He was none but a boy. And I said, uh, and the girls. And I said, I'd like to speak with you all just a minute on the principles as Christians we all are. And we're here for the same great cause. I want to ask you three girls and you young man, can you in the name of the Lord Jesus, you said you've been here two years, can put your finger on one soul that you have won to the Lord? One soul. They could not do it. <laughs> not one soul. I said, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Not at all. And I said, I appreciate what you're doing, but you girls ought to be home help your mammy with the dishes. That's exactly right. She ain't got no business over here. That's right. That's exactly. And nobody's got a business going to the fields unless they have received the Holy Ghost and preaching Amen. the power of demonstration goes and so on things. That'll, that'll move those people. Right. And look what uprises you got now and everything. It's because that the true gospel hasn't been preached to them. It's been given to them in word form. Well, you see what that is? That's a continuation of, yeah. the, of the escape one of the Luther yeah. age. We Amen. give the world the free press. That's right, uh, the free Bible. Now, now the age, the great age. Now, let's begin now. I believe we're on the, uh, that was a, a salute, the seventh verse. True uh, uh, to the Philadelphia. Right. These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the keys of David. He that open and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man open. What a statement is it? Amen. I, I'm going to come back to that just in a minute. Because it, it applies farther in the Scripture here. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. And no man can shut it. For thou has a little strength, and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. Now, watch the, the time coming. Now, if the great missionary move that swept across the nations... A brotherly love to take what they had, nothing against it, of literature and whatever more, into the different parts of the world. Now, the church denomination had gone back to uh, education works again. See, gone back. After the great denomination had been set up, Jesus set an open door. After the Wesleyan Age had come in and the Methodist church had been established in the earth, taking roots, growing, making a great church, which it is today, one of the greatest uh, among the Protestant churches. And that time, the thing that took place then was Jesus set an open door for the church before they entered into the Laodicean age. The reason I'm saying this this way so you can see what I mean by the lap over. See? It's from the missionary age of the door. But you see, it, it told them he had the key of David and so forth. But here he said he had set before the church now. At that age of missionary and uh, Whitfield and, and all those others and Finney and Sankey and Moody on down. Moody being one of the last come down to now he set a open door before the church. Oh, here's where you have to watch now. It's just in between the Philadelphia and the Lady Ocean age. Lap over. Jesus is the door. Amen. Now, if you'll turn with me to John 10, 17. Let's back this up now. I'll be sure that the, uh, many of you would believe and then some would say, well, I, I never, he just said that. I'd like to, just to read it. John, the 10th chapter, and the 17th verse. John 10, 17. <clears throat> All right, we read these words. I beg your pardon, John 10, 7, not 17. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am 
from the door of the sheepfold. Amen. That's back into the blessings. How do we get into Christ? What is He? The sheepfold. Amen. I often wondered about that. What could He be a door being a man? Now over in, over in the eastern countries there, I found out one day when I noticed that the shepherd at night time, he takes all the sheep inside of the corral, drives them through a door. And then when he gets all of them in there, he counts them all to see if they're ever one in. Then he lays down in the door himself. Nothing can come into the sheep or any sheep can go out without crossing him. Amen. So Jesus is the door. Amen. Lead to the sheepfold. And I was riding a little British jeep, and I said to the fellow, I said, those are the shepherds come down through the city, and a whistle blowed, and everybody slammed on their brakes, and I thought, what's the matter? And it was a shepherd going through the town with his sheep. Now, over in the east, it isn't like here. They lay all their goodies out, out alongside the house in the marketplaces. And there's apples and pears and what kind of fruits and grapes is piled up beautifully, piled up along on a rack like this runs down. And each one of the sellers stands there and tries to pull you in to buy some of his fruits and things. Well, this shepherd, he started right down that main street. I said, Brother, here's where the riot comes in. I'll stand up and watch this. And the brother with me said, You'll be surprised, Brother Brandon, watch. Everything stopped. The shepherd walking along, paying no attention, ever sheep following him exactly. Amen. Following him. If he made a jot like this and turned, ever the sheep right behind him made a jot, the next one followed him, the next one followed him right on around and made that turn. Oh, that's the way we follow the shepherd. Amen. That's right. Going right down through the middle of that street to get something down the other end, and then sheep following him just like a dog. They look over and look at those goodies, but they follow the shepherd. Oh, I like that. See? I said, oh, brother, I wish I could just talk this language. I preach right now. There you are. Yeah, you not turn right or left, but stay right after the shepherd. That's what the church has done all the way down through, staying after the shepherd. The Holy Spirit that leads us into eternal life. Not turning because this is a big flowery church and this has got so and so many doctors and so and so like that. But stay right after the shepherd. Amen. Wherever the shepherd goes, the sheep follow. My sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. Right. He, that shepherd knows grunts and everything else that make those sheep behave. Then when we got out of the city, it's an amazing thing. I seen a, a field out there and some man laying around and they had donkeys and cows and pigs and sheep and goats and everything out there. And I said, well, what's them guys out there? He said, shepherds. And I said, a shepherds herding donkeys? And he said, yes, sir. Well, I said, I, I thought shepherd just meant sheep. He said, no, shepherd is a herder, grazer. And over your country, they call them cowboys and and uh, things like that. I said, oh, I see. A shepherd is a herder, yes. He watches the herd. That's right. He said, the strange thing is, at uh, nighttime, where you're striking, you being a minister, I might tell you something. He said, when nighttime comes, it's true, he pastures every one of them, leads them around and helps them and see if they get good things through the day. But when nighttime comes, the all the, the mules and the donkeys and the... The camels and whatever he's got is left out into the field, but he rounds up the sheep and takes them to the corral. Yeah. Oh, I said, Lord, make me a sheep, whatever you do. <laughs> For when the night time comes, I want to go into the sheepfold. Enter in at the door. Come by the door. John 17, uh, 7, you're a... Uh, he said, I am, uh, ten seven rather, he said, I am the door to the sheep. All that ever come before me is thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Amen. Now, I set before this church between the Philadelphian age and the Lady Seeing age, uh, open door. 
Oh, do you get it now? You got your thinking caps on real good and tight? Listen now, this is good. I tell you, it's honey in a rock. Just get no nuggets out and shine them up. I am the door to the sheepfold. What is that door that was set now? Let's go back in our minds. And from that great missionary age of the Methodists, as swept through the country with the message of sanctification, Luther through justification, Wesley come along with the message of sanctification. And at the end of the Methodist age, the end when it took roots and began to become a great organization. And when any church, now listen, that's strong, but I want someone to show me anywhere through the gleanings of history, any church that God ever raised up, come up the Pentecostal way without any organization, and as soon as it organized, it died Amen. and never raised again. Amen. Oh, the membership went on, but they never had a revival. Amen. Luther's revival never raised, and neither did Methodist revival ever raise, and neither will the Pentecostal revival ever raise. Amen. No, sir. They organized it, which God said in the church ages, he hates that thing, Amen. the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Amen. Now remember, we're not talking against anybody. That good people is scattered. God's sheep is in all that places out there. That is true. That's right. Methodists, Baptists, whatever they are, they're God's people if they are born again Amen. of the Amen. Spirit of God. They're God's people. But their organizations has cranked them down and packed letter from Methodist to Baptist to Camelite and so forth. So they, they wore the letters out. Amen. Just packed it from place to place. All right. How the Lord said now, at the end of that age, I am the door to the sheepfold. Now what door was open about Jesus just between these two ages? 1906. About when the Methodist age and, and, and Dwight Moody and them faded from the scene, there come forth the break forth of the people receiving the Holy Ghost speaking with tongues and things come back into the church. Amen. It's about right. Yeah, about 1906, along in there. All right. What took place then? After that began to come along, the first thing you know, they organized the old general council, which went in now called the Assemblies of God. Amen. See, all that church that was lapped over. And what taking place then? He said an open door. <coughs> an open door. Now let's just read it now. Catch it word by word, just the way he brings it. See? Behold, let's see. No man shutteth, set before thee an open door. It's on the other side. I know thy works. Behold, I set before thee an open door. And no man can shut it. An open door. What was it? It was the revelation Amen. of the supreme deity of Jesus Christ. Amen. Not being a second person of a trinity, but being God himself Amen. made flesh and dwelling among us. Amen. And the revelation, if you know it's just a minute, let's just read just a little bit farther. Shut it. Uh, has a little strength and has not denied my name. The first time the name's been spoken of now since back in this age back here. Amen. Lost his name and Luther come out with a name that he was alive and was dead. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Here comes out the name of Jesus again in between these two ages here. Amen. Amen. In between the open door. Now, it's a revelation. What he was. The deity, the revelations of his deity. Now, that's what he revealed at the very first church age, now watch, as John saw him standing, the seven golden candlesticks, he was standing with his hands out. Here's the first candlestick, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. With his hands out in the form of the cross, he said, I am Alpha and Omega. Amen. In other words, I'll be supreme in the first I'll be supreme Amen. in the last. Amen. The light rises in the east and sets in the west. It's been a dismal dark time, but it shall be light. Right. 
in the evening time. The same gospel power that raised up here on the one hand at the east has shined over and now in the other hand at the west. Alpha and Omega. I'm A and I am Z in his hand. You get it? Now, what did he do in the first chapter of Revelations? He revealed his supreme deity Amen. to the Amen. first church, Ephesus. Is that right? Amen. But I notice every one of these churches coming down through here, he revealed himself in deity only in his glorified form. Amen. But on this last one, he becomes Z back to the original beginning again. Amen. The first and the last. The first age. Now the last age. For he said, I am the first and the last. And but you say, well, how did that happen? What fellow took that forth? It was a revelation. Amen. Many of you years received it. Because his in... I'm going to say something now. Look, his entire church is built upon divine revelations of himself. Amen. Amen. Is that right? Amen. If you don't believe that, let's turn to Matthew 16, 18. You'll see just in a minute that the whole revelation is built upon Himself. His whole church is built upon the revelations of Himself. Now, let's begin here uh, at the... Let's begin let's say about the 14th verse. Then they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist. The, the question was, Jesus said on the course of history of Philippi and asked his disciples, saying, Who do man say I, the Son of Man, am? 13th verse. And at 16, 13 now. And they said, Now watch, here's the first place of the church Jesus ever spoke of and in on into the revelations is at last. And he said, Some say thou art John the Baptist. And some Elias, and others Jeremiah, and other, and, and are one of the prophets. He said unto them, the whole entire group, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Oh my. Amen. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, Simon uh, Barjonas, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Oh, my. You never got this from a seminary? There was no other way you ever got this, Simon, the son of Jonas. The only way you got it was a spiritual revelation that was revealed to you from heaven that I am He. Jesus said, if you don't believe I'm He, you'll die in your sins. I am He. I say unto thee, thou art Peter, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell can't prevail again. Amen. What is it? Spiritual. Spiritual. The spiritual truth. The word of the Lord. Now, we find out that in this great revelation that God gave here to the church in this last days, that God sent and revealed to himself the open door between the two ages. Amen. It wasn't in the, the Lady of Sin age, neither was it in this other age, the Philadelphian age, but it was in between the lap over cause of, I'll prove it just a little farther down you'll get it, you see. We'll make it risk so sure that you can't keep from seeing it if you just want to see it, see. All right. Now, the revelation of Himself is where He's built His church. How many knows that to be true now? Amen. He built His church upon the revelation of Himself. Amen. All right. Now, what did He say? No man can shut it. Amen. I know thy works. Behold, I set before thee an open door. What is the open door? The revelation of the supreme deity of Jesus Christ. Amen. What did he say to his first church back here? Back in his age? He said, I am he that was, which is, and shall come. I am the first and the last. I am the Almighty. Amen. He said it three different times, made himself deity to this first church. Here, before he went into the last church age, 
He said, I set before you an open door. Amen. If you want to see the revelation, here it is. Amen. Where he had built his church. And the only way he could take his church is back to the revelation of what he is. Amen. Truly. Amen. Look. When Abraham made a covenant, or God made a covenant with Abraham... That day that he said, how will these things be sealed? I'm old and my only heir is, is this uh, uh, Damascus servant I've got here, Eliezer. said, I'm old and you promised me a child. How will you do it? How will it be done? And remember, he went to sleep. A deep sleep fell upon him, like every man does, death. And then he noticed before he went a, a smoking furnace, every sinner deserves to go to hell. He had killed the beast. A heifer, a she, a goat, and a ram, and a turtle dove, and a pigeon. He never separated the turtle dove and pigeon. And then this little white light went before there and went back and forth between these cut pieces of animal, confirming the covenant with Abraham. Now, in Japan, if there happens to be a Japanese person here, you know how they make a covenant in Japan? They throw salt on one another. Get a little cruise of salt and sit down there. They talk, will you do so and so? Yeah, I'll do so and so. Then they make a covenant, get some salt and throw it on one. Because salt is a preserver, see? All right, they throw salt on one another. That's a covenant. In America, how we make a covenant here, we say, well, will you do a certain thing? I'll do a certain thing. And first thing you know, we shake one another's hands. Shake on it. That's a covenant. But in the Orient, the way they made a covenant, they wrote up something. And they wrote out a contract and they killed a beast in time of Abraham. They cut that beast open and stood in between it, wrote this contract, and tore it like this. One tuck one piece and one the other. And then they tuck an oath that let their bodies be like this dead beast if they fail to keep this contract. And now the only way that this contract can ever be, you can never duplicate it. Amen. It's got to come right back exactly the same thing, joined together. Now, what was God showing Abraham what he's going to do? That he was going to take Abraham's seed through Isaac down to Jesus. Amen. And he took him up on Calvary. And there he tore him apart. Amen. He tore the spirit out of him, away from the body. He raised up the body and set it on the right hand of the majesty on high and sent back the Holy Spirit to the church. Amen. That's the covenant of God, tore it apart. We got the spirit, he's got the body. Amen. And when he comes back together, the spirit that's in us joins with him as bride. Amen. 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 Not any denomination hooked into it at all. Amen. No, sir, it's Amen. purely unadulterated Holy Spirit birth. That's all. Amen. That's the covenant. Now, now we find out that he said, I set before you an open door. Now, I don't care how many man-made organizations comes up or denominations. Even the gates of hell can't shut it. <laughs> Only one way to beat it, join it. That's all. You can't join it, so you have to be born into it. <laughs> right. So there's nobody can ever stop that message of supreme deity and the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. The gates of hell will never prevail against it. You say, how do you know it's right? It's exactly with the Word and no one else can say nothing about it. Exactly, it's the Word. No place where anybody's baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. This great St. Paul, the angel of Ephesus, commissioned every person that had not been baptized, no matter how you've been baptized. If you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, he commissioned to come and be baptized over again Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, if an angel from heaven comes teaching anything else, let him be accursed. Amen. So you can see what the angel that comes in this last days, what kind of message he's going to have when he comes out. Amen. We may be leading it up to him. But I'm telling you, when he comes, he'll preach the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't need you to come around tomorrow night and show you through the Scripture. He certainly will. And the circumcision of the heart and divine miracles and workings of powers, just like they had on the day of Pentecost, the very original Pentecostal blessing Amen. will come right back Amen. to that little remnant to take it up there. That contract will be just exactly like it was when it was off in the first place. Oh, I love you. I'm so glad, so glad I... I can't express it hard enough. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one. I'm so glad. I just wish all my brethren was like that. I just wish that I could have my brothers and sisters out here, my precious friends out in the world, to see this great thing. I, I, I would, I'd be willing tonight. God knows this. I got a little boy, Joseph, to raise a little girl, Sarah and Rebecca. 
a lovely wife that I'd hate to leave. But if I know that my brethren across the people that I know in this world could accept that and believe it and be filled with the Holy Ghost, I'd be ready to go right now. Amen. Exactly right. Amen. Oh, if I could just... And you can't... If you talk gentle, they think like you're trying to put something over on them. And, and it, there's only one thing to do. That's stay right with the Word and Amen. nail it down. Amen. That's exactly right. Stay right Amen. with it. Amen. Oh, how I love Him. A revelation of Himself. His supreme deity. What did He do it? I just can't leave it somehow. He revealed it in the church of Ephesus. Is that right? Amen. Amen. And that was when the light first broke through the shine of the Christian light. Is that right? Amen. The Holy Ghost age started right here in Ephesus. And the prophet said there would come a day that wouldn't be night nor day, but in the evening the light would come back again. Amen. <laughs> you see it? Amen. Uh, see this day of dismal. Come across to all this year. Dismal organizations and everything, but in the last days over here, way down here, he had set that open door. Jesus said, I'm that door. Amen. Did you ever hear him say, I am the gate, I am the way, Amen. the truth and the light? Amen. See? Amen. Did you ever hear him say, straight is the gate Amen. and narrow is the way? Amen. Did you ever notice how that straight was spelled? Amen. 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 S-T-R-A-I-T. Amen. Water. <laughs> a straight means a water stuff like that it's your IGHTC straight water is the way Na- water is the gate and narrow is the way Amen. what is the water the gate the door see the open in the name of the Lord Jesus is the way Amen. to the water <laughs> straight is the gate narrow is the way that Jesus Water is the gate in the name of the Lord Jesus entering in. Repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive, as you look towards Calvary, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. For the promise is unto you and to your children. Some of them said just for the apostles. For you and to your children and to them that's far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall ever call. <laughs> that's all. Amen. And as the Lord our God shall call, the promises to everyone, if you'll come the same way the prescription reads. That's right. Don't say, well, I'll slip around this way. There's a man one time slipped around and got in another way. Do you know that? Did you ever read the parable of it? There's a man slipped around and got in another way, now in the Orient. When they, there's at the wedding supper. We pick it up in the morning. <clears throat> at the wedding supper, how that man got in there. We'll try to take that in the morning. I was going to sit down, but let it go. In the morning. How that man got into that place from the wedding supper, or for the wedding supper. All right. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way. Water is the gate, the entrance unto the Lord God. I have set the open door. <clears throat> I have the keys. <clears throat> I'm the only one can open it. I'm the only one can reveal it. I have the keys. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Then no man can come to me except my Father draws him, and all the Father has given me will come to me. Amen. No man can be saved only through Jesus Christ, Amen. not through any church, any organization, any bishop, pope, Amen. just through Jesus Christ. He has the key. He's the only one. The keys of what? David. The future coming millennium. Where he'll sit on the throne of David. I have the keys of David. I open this door and nobody can shut it. Nobody can open it but me and nobody can shut it to me. How can it be? How can a man know he is a Christ until he's revealed himself to him? He reveals himself. He has the key. He can open it or leave it alone. See? I have the key to the door. I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. <laughs> oh, I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I am the first and the last. I am the Father. I am the Son. I am the Holy Ghost. I am. Not I was or will be. I am. That I am. <laughs> the whole thing. I am. Not I was or will be. I am. That means... Uh, Living presence for eternity. Amen. I am. Always was. 
Always will be. I am now as I always was and always will be. See? He, he just, I am. Have the keys of David to the kingdom. No man can shut it. The seventh verse proves that. All right? That he has the keys of David. No man can shut. Now let's see what the next thing is. For thou hast a little strength. Oh. Said to this little group down here, you got just a little strength now. What does that mean? Just like a man that's been dead, kind of shaking himself, coming to life, reviving up a little, Amen. coming to life. You come out of them old dead creeds and everything, you begin to come to life a little bit, shaking yourself, kind of waking yourself up. You got a little strength, but I've set a door before you now. Amen. As soon as you come out of, of Lutheranism and Papalism and all those other isms and, and Methodism and everything, you said, I put a door before you, now you got a little strength, what are you going to do about it? Amen. <laughs> it's set before you, you can walk in or walk out, either one you want to. Amen. The door is set before you, you've got a little strength. Just come into life. You're just beginning. So it was with the early church. Notice, at the end of the Lady of Sin age, went back to works again. Now, if you notice over here to, sh to show that this church is between these two, if you get over into the Lady of Sin age or the Lady of Sin church age, I know thy works. Right at the end of the Lady of Sin age. What was it? Thy works in a seat where Satan's at. What was the seat of Satan? See? Went right straight back into a denomination again. You assemblies of God and Pentecostal oneness and the church of God. Oh, don't you see, brethren, what you've done? You went right straight back to the thing that God hated. Amen. Break up brotherhood. Look at the assemblies of God. Some of the finest people in the world in them assemblies of God. Look at that United Pentecostal church. Just as fine as you ever met in your life. Look at the church of God. And because of those organizations, they fuss and squeal and fuss at one another and call one another buzzers, roost, and rat den. Why, well, it's a disgrace. Amen. One thing God hates is sowing discord among brethren. Amen. That's right. And those organizations is what does it, sows discord among brethren. We should be standing in the breach and saying, we are brothers. Amen. We are not divided. All one body we. One in hope and doctrine. Doctrine of the Bible. One in charity. I like that old song, Amen. Onward Christian Soldier. Yes, sir. The end of the latest scene said, went back to works again. Our Pentecostal denominations went back to the denomination. Let's get verse 15. I got here verse 15 of Revelation 3 and see if that isn't right. Revelation 3. And, um, and uh, or let's see if I wrote that down right. Revelations. Oh, no. No, I, I wrong. Verse 15. It's the verse 15 of this same chapter shows the same thing down here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know thy works that are neither cold or hot. I know thy works. So they went back to their first thing again. Went back with their strength. And went back to the Pentecostal denominations. The first, fifth, the verse of, uh, of the same chapter. All right. Uh, between the two ages, they got a little strength. Between the two denominational Nicolaitan doctrinal age. Now, when the Lutheran year had formed, went back into the Nicolaitan, the great archbishops and so forth. Then along come Wesley, they formed the Archbishop of Canterbury and all these different great, all over that in the churches and so forth and in that age. Then over here in the Pentecostal, they go right back to the same thing again. All their great denominations, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. But between these two ages, he opened the door and gave the church a little strength to revive it. After they shake his head, look out and see where it was at. Amen. Amen. Get the revelation. Amen. You didn't see anything knocked out, you know, and first thing he was going to shake his head and look around and shake his head. <laughs> By the way, I was dreaming about that last night. Charlie, I thought I shot a squirrel. Knocked him off a limb. And I seen an old woman over there. Oh, is she ever uh, angry at me? She was going to come get me. And this squirrel had a little white string around his neck. That little fellow there shook his head two three times, looked at me, and he took off as far as he could go. Right back to the woods. You know, that old woman might miss the church, but <laughs> she tried to stomp me. I got away from her somehow. <laughs> but, uh, oh, just a little life, enough to know to, to uh, I know I went down the street, and she's going to cut me off down there, and I turned my four around so quick, I had a trailer on my back, I flipped the whole thing around, took off the other way. <laughs> Keep her from <laughs> Just did get by. Now, you have a little strength left, so you want to use this strength to really turn about face between the two denominations. Do you notice? Kept his word. 
Watch the next verse here now. You have a little strength, and it's kept my word. Kept my word. That's how they got their strength. That's how they got their revelation. The one that got a hold of the Bible when Luther printed the Bible and come down through the Wesley age and so forth, they got a hold of it and kept the word and seen the revelation of Jesus Christ being God made flesh among us and the water baptism in the name of Jesus. So they went right into her. Amen. There you are. They, they got his name then. Amen. <laughs> See? Why, it's just as plain as uh, plain to read a newspaper. Amen. Just And you can't deny because right here it is figured right here in the Bible and here it is right here and we got it's a history. Amen. It's exactly Amen. where the Pentecostal church started. Got its name. About 1908, 10, 12, somewhere along there, it began to fall. Now, all right, has not denied the name. Has not denied my name. Now, I like that. Has got the, got the keys to David now. He can keep his word and, and put you into the kingdom. Uh, his name had been revealed. They got out of the church that had a name that they were dead. And now they got into the church that's got the name that is got life. Amen. They come out of the dead Father, Son, Holy Spirit name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That don't even make sense. Amen. See, it's give there for a revelation. His whole book is wrote on revelation. That's what it is. He reveals Himself. Now He said, Go baptize the people in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Matthew 28, 19. Now, what one of them names you go to use? Now, most of the Trinitarian people baptize in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. That's not even scriptural. Ask anybody. It's in the name. Saying they're not names. Amen. Name. Amen. Name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. See? All right. Father is not a name. Son is not a name. Holy Ghost is not a name. Amen. So what is it? Something dead. There's no name to it. But through those dead titles, by the life of Christ, it reveals. And Peter must have had the... He was standing right there Amen. with the keys of, of the kingdom of heaven in his hand. And the kingdom is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hanging on his side, the keys of the kingdom are always the revelation because Jesus told him, Oh, brother. Don't you see that? Amen. Peter was the one that was blessed with the revelation of truth. Amen. There he was standing right there and he heard Jesus say, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Peter turned around and said, Lord, I sure got the keys here. Amen. I got the revelation of what that meant. Because I know Father's no name, Son's no name, and Holy Ghost's no name. But I know what that name is. Amen. So I'll baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Right. Now, it's just like he's reading a love story. And uh, that's the last book of Matthew. Last part of Matthew. If you picked up a love story, some of you ladies, I know you don't do it. Sure. <laughs> see, but if you did it when he was a sinner, see. You picked up the story down to, you know, his little old girl and picked up this story and said, John and Mary live happy ever after. Huh, who's John and Mary? Now, there's only one way if you know who John and Mary is. That's go back to first the book and read it. Is that right? Well, then in the last book of Matthew, the last verse, that Jesus said, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe whatever I have commanded them. Now, if, if Father's no name and Son's no name and Holy Ghost is no name, you better go back to first of the book. <laughs> See? Now, if we go back to the first of the book, first chapter of Matthew, you find this. i just like to give this little illustration. I kind of might be somebody here that's never seen. Watch this. This is the Father... This is the Son, and this is the Holy Ghost. Now, watch close. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19. Is that right? Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Now, who is this? Father. Listen, class. Father, Holy Ghost, Son. Now, who is this? Holy Ghost. Who is this? Who is this? Son. All right. Now, this was the Father of who? Jesus Christ. Is that right? Amen. Now, Matthew, the first chapter, 28th verse. Let's read it. We take the love story now and see what it reads like. We see who this fellow was that, uh, that he said, go baptize him in the name of the Father, now the Son, and the Holy Ghost. All right. Now, the first chapter of Matthew starts out with the genealogy. 
The book of the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham got Isaac, I got Jacob, and on, on, and on. On down until it comes to the, the 18th verse. Now, you see, you go ahead down here, the 17th verse. And so all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations. And from David until the carrying away of Babylon, 14 generations. And carrying away of Babylon and of Christ for 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, are you reading behind me? Amen. Listen close. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, she was found with a, before they came together, she was found with the child of God the Father. Does that read like that? Found with a child of what? Well, I thought somebody said this was his father. Now, if the Holy Ghost is one person and the Father is another person, then he had two fathers. What you got? A illegitimate child. Amen. Oh, he said, uh, it is slipped up to me to misprint there, all right? And Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the... Out of the two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Amen. Huh? The Holy Ghost was his father. Amen. Well, he said God was his father. Amen. Now, if there are two different people, which one was his father? <laughs> See where you get yourself? You just hang yourself right out in the middle of midair. Amen. Now, you've got to say that the Holy Ghost is God himself. It's the Holy Spirit, which is God. Amen. Now, you've got two now instead of three. All right. All right, 21st verse. That which is conceived in her, who, who was one conceived this in her? The Holy Ghost. All right. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name, name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. All this was done, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which is spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, being interpreted God with us. Amen. Amen. What was his name? Amen. <laughs> now, who did John and Mary live happy ever after? What is the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? When Jesus was born on earth, he was Christ the Lord. At his circumcision eight days later, his mother gave him the name and his father gave him the name of Jesus. He was Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ then. He was Lord. When he was born, he was Christ the Lord. And then when he received his name of Jesus, that made him Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. That's exactly what was revealed to Peter. He knew who John and Mary was when he said, Go baptize in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. So it could be revealed because... Jesus knew that Peter had the gift of revelation. <laughs> he knew because it had already been revealed to him by the Spirit above. And when God sees that a man can receive revelations from above, he can trust that man to do something with him. When it's revealed to him because he said no man can reveal this but his Father. God's the only one who can reveal it. He knew Peter and uh, was in contact with the Spirit. So he, Peter knew the revelation. And then he went up there and said, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of his sins. Now, just a few days before that, Jesus told Peter, the same time when he told him who the revelation was, Upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I say it, thou art Peter, and I'll give thee the keys. Oh, the keys to the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll give you the keys. Whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind it in heaven. Amen. What you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. Then on the day of Pentecost, at the inauguration of the church, ten days after Jesus said, Go baptize in the, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Peter, by spiritual revelation, no, there was no such a thing as name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, nobody else thought that till the Catholic age. Amen. And every person that's baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is actually baptized in the Catholic faith. Amen. Right? Not in Christian baptism. There was written. Now, on the day of Pentecost, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues and, and acting like they were drunk. And they were drunk. They were drunk on new wine. 
the new wine had come from heaven out of Canaan above. And when they were all screaming and shouting and acting like they were drunk and so forth, Peter stood up in the midst of them and told them that they were not drunk, but they were, they were, this was that that the prophet had said would come to pass. He poured out his spirit. And now they, they said, man and brethren, what can we do? Man and brethren, what can we do? That's the question. How are we going to get it? Amen. Who's got the keys? Come here, Simon. <laughs> you got the keys. Pull them off your side. What are you going to say? I remember Jesus Christ said, If you bide it on earth, I'll bide it in heaven. Amen. If you loose it on earth, I'll loose it in heaven. If he's God, he has to keep his word. Amen. Now, you Catholic priest, show me your forgiveness of sin. A Catholic priest told me one time, said, Didn't Jesus say, Whoever sins you remit to them, they're remitted? He said it. Whoever sins you retain to them, they're retained. Yeah. That's whoever you forgive, they're forgiven. Whoever you don't forgive, they're not forgiven. I said, That's correctly what it said. He said, Then didn't Christ give His church, which we are His church, the power to forgive sins on earth? Certainly did. I said, Now, if you'll forgive them the same way that they forgive them, I'll go with you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. I said, How'd they forgive them? Did they tell them go do an Ovini or something or the way you do? No, sir. Peter said, Repent. Amen. 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 Repent every one of you. Amen. And be baptized in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The key went click on earth and went click in heaven. That's, it. That's the reason when Paul met some had already been baptized for the same man that baptized Amen. Jesus. He said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? He said, We know not worthy of being the Holy Ghost. He said, The what? You take the Greek word and said, How was you baptized? They said, Unto John. He said, That won't work anymore. Amen. Heaven's done closed. Amen. You have to come be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So they heard this. They were baptized over again in the name of Jesus Christ. And when they did, Paul laid his hands on them. The Holy Ghost came upon them. They spoke in tongues and prophesied. Oh, brother, that's back to the beginning. That's exactly. That's the open door that was set right here. Geographically, it's right. The evening lights and every scripture in the Bible leads right to it. Amen. We could stand here for hours and they've got 15 more minutes time and about 35 different comments to make here. <laughs> we'll get them in the morning if we don't get them tonight. All right. Now, all right. And no man shutteth it, for thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word, all right, and has not denied my name. Here we got it. Not deny my name. Name had been revealed, got away from the old dead Sardis denomination, and had come into the living church. Now let's take the ninth verse. Now we're going to watch now. We're coming over into something that's very dangerous. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. There's a good night full right there. Watch. What are they now? Them that he talked to that had found his name after all this time here down here. Come in the open door of Jesus Christ. Got the word of life. Been filled with the Holy Ghost. And now he said, there are those among you who are in the synagogue of Satan. Now, oh, my brother, if you would just... Uh, want to go back to, to Pergamos at uh, Revelation 2.13, just a minute. And let me just show you here what that really is, the denomination. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. Amen. There you are. That Laodicean, uh, I mean that uh, Nicolaitan church age, where they had denominated. And watch, show there was a church, a synagogue, Amen. a church. A church of denomination. Oh, brother, the synagogue of Satan. Then the works of denomination is of the devil. Amen. Not the Christians now, remember. Amen. They're Christians, but the denomination itself. Amen. All right. Now, did you notice? He said, you have those among you who say they are Jews, but you found them liars. Now remember the great angel. Now what's he speaking to? This last church. This open door between the two churches. Now the first church age was taught by who? Paul. Amen. Now let's go to Romans 2.29 and see what a Jew is. 
So it should be sure to know it is my own thought. Huh? Romans, the second chapter, and the 29th verse of Romans. All right, here we are. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is of the heart and the spirit, and not in the letter whose praises is not of uh, whose praises not of man but of God. Amen. What is a what is a Jew? A spirit, Holy Ghost still Christian. Amen. I know that you're down here after that age of sanctification that say they got the Holy Ghost, but he said it, I never. (laughs) They said they had the Holy Ghost without the signs following, but he said they are a liar. These signs shall follow them that believe. Can't make him lie. Oh, brother, that blinds you round and round. (laughs) Oh, my. I'll re- behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews, which say they are spirit filled Christians. Say the synagogue, the organization. I'll make them, it says they got the Holy Ghost and all organized, uh, organized up there. They haven't even got the revelation yet. Amen. See? All right. I'll say them, it say they are Jews, are Christians, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Right there, I'd have to break in on me in the morning's message. That's the sleeping virgin right there. Amen. Can you see it? Amen. When was it at at the end time? Oh, when they went out. Here is the, see, they are justified by faith, sanctified, justified through Luther's message. Sanctified to your but miss the open door. Amen. You see it? Amen. Justified by faith to Luther. Sanctified to Wesley's age. Many of them precious Nazarene, pilgrim, oldest Wesley, Methodist, and so forth. All of them live a good, clean life, sanctified, and thank it's got the Holy Ghost. Amen. And you're a fellow speaking tongues or something, you'll laugh at him, make fun of him, say it's of the devil. Amen. Brother, you sealed your doom when you did that. You blasphemed the Holy Ghost, which is unpardonable. What do you say? We belong to the first church. I don't care how many churches you belong to. It has nothing to do with the Word of God. It don't take your head. That's right. Synagogues of Satan. I hope I don't hurt you. I, I just hate to talk like that, but there's something inside of me motivating me to do it. I don't know why I do it. Uh, I, you know I don't like to do that. Uh, I just feel like awful when I say it, but yet I've got to say it. Amen. There's something in there making me say it. I always hate to cut at women. I, I feel so, a woman can cry. I just feel terrible. I, I just hate to cut at women, but there's something in there that makes me do it. An uh, immoral woman. Ooh, man. I just can't stand it. Uh, because there's something inside that makes me do it. The Holy Spirit. And I look down here in the Word, I think, Lord, if I'm wrong, show it to me. Don't let me do that just to be going like that. People won't. I won't. I love people. You know I do. Don't let me hurt nobody. God, you know I wouldn't do that. But the Holy Spirit rise up and say, stand on that word. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Stay right there on that word. And I say, yes, Lord. If it, if you're my best friend. You're the only one. I, uh, you're my real friend. It's the only one going to help me when this life is fading away. So I'll stand right with you then, Lord. Here I come. I don't mean to hurt. Please don't take me wrong. When I'm cutting them organizations and they way before I know anything about this, all my life I've cut at it. Never did believe it. Amen. It's the reason I wouldn't hook up with it. And all right, thank God for keeping me away from it. Amen. Behold, I'll make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are spirit filled, and are not, but lie. And I'll make them to come worship before your feet. Don't you remember the sleeping virgin? When she raised up, now remember, what was she called? There's ten of them went out to meet the bridegroom. Is that right? Five was wise, had oil in their lamp. How many know what oil signifies in the Bible? Spirit. Now, one couldn't say you're not sanctified, and I'm not. This is all sanctified. Every one of them. 
all sanctified, but five was wise enough to have the wisdom of revelation to catch that door, see? To be filled with the Spirit. They had oil in their lamps, and the others had no oil. And when they were awakened, why here they came up to him and said, Oh, oh, oh give me some of your Holy Spirit oil. Give me some. So, yeah. Sorry, sister, just got enough for myself. I sure ain't got any to spare. So, and while, he said, go pray up. And while they were gone to get some, the bridegroom came. And they went in to the wedding supper. And they was left without where they'll go through the tribulation period of, watch just a little, couple more verses. You'll see they go right on into the tribulation period. See? Now, uh, uh, the sleeping, we'll pick that up in the morning. I believe it would be a little better if we waited for that because we're getting down here now just about time. All right, uh, to close. Now, let's see. Behold, I the, found them that they are liars, that they do not have the Holy Ghost. Just one little thing here, please, while we're all together. Judas is a carrot. As I said last night, was the son of perdition. The Bible said he was born the son of perdition. Then when he, and Jesus Christ was born the Son of God. Then God lived in Christ. Is that right? Uh, Satan lived in Judas. If he was the Son of God, born the Son of God, the incarnate Son of God, then Satan was born the Son of Perdition. He was the incarnate, uh, the Son of Perdition. Satan, the devil. Now, if you notice, he joined himself with Jesus and become one of them. See, now the reason he did that to get that deception that he could come into this day in the church. Now Jesus said, them synagogues is of Satan. Amen. Did it strike? Amen. They are synagogues of Satan. That's yes. Judas. Yes. Pretending to be a Christian. Amen. What was Judas' main thing was money. Amen. The biggest pull of a lot of these things today is Amen. money. Amen. Look at the assemblies of God building a six million dollar building over here and teaching the Lord's coming right away. Amen. Oh, the bombs are in the hangers blow us away and building a six million dollar building. Oh my. Well, Rich and Heavy, we get that tomorrow night. Now, Lord willing. Now notice here. Oh, look how the churches are big, these big organizations. They pool their money together and Oh, mercy, they just become multi-billion. Even have finances, uh, loan associations Amen. among them and everything. Loaning out money and things to churches. Amen. Brother, that don't sound like apostolic to me. Peter Amen. said, silver and gold have I none. <laughs> but such as I have. Give me that and take all your money. <laughs> silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, that's what he had. Amen. The revelation of it. <laughs> give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. All right. Now we find out here that they were synagogues of Satan. Now, how could they be? Now, Judas, when he come... Now, look. Just about the time that Jesus come on the scene, Judas come on the scene. You notice that? Amen. Just about the time Jesus went off the scene, Amen. Judas went off the scene. Amen. Just about the time the Holy Ghost come back on the scene again, Judas come back on the scene. Amen. Spirit of Antichrist will work also on the children of disobedient. Not mine in the Bible, but mine in the, the denomination. See? And they made him a synagogue. And Jesus said here, it's a synagogue of Satan. Where? Setting way down in this age here. How do you start back here? By an organization. That's the same thing it is down here. A synagogue of Satan. You get it? The synagogue of Satan, he said. Uh, which say that they are spirit-filled. Now, how could they say that? Judas, when he was here on earth, he met up with Jesus, made a confession that he was a believer in Jesus, and become the treasure, packing all the money. Is that right? Amen. We all know that? Now, if he believed on Jesus Christ, he accepted falsely justification. Amen. Is that right? Romans 5, 1. Therefore, being justified by faith. That's right. All right? Now, then another thing in St. John seventeen seventeen, Jesus sanctified them to the truth, he said. Amen. Thy word is the truth, and he was the word. Amen. And he gave them power against unclean spirits to go out and have healing services and cast out devils and 
and do all kinds of miracles. And when they returned back, Judas with them, I watch, Nazarene, Wesley Methodist, turned back rejoicing and exceedingly glad and praising God and shouting because the devils was subject unto them. And Jesus said, Rejoice not because the devil's is subject unto you, but rejoice because your name is written in the book of life. Amen. And remember, Judas was one of them. Amen. See, he could deceive the church right up into that. Amen. He's worked right along them lines, you know. But when it comes to Pentecost, Amen. he showed his colors. Amen. That's exactly what he'd done in the primitive, in the Methodist church and what he'd done in the Lutheran church and what he'd done in the Nazarene church and the churches of God and them come right up to sanctification when it comes to the baptism of the Holy Ghost to speak in tongues and have signs and wonders. They condemned it. They'll go divine healing route for you. Sure, Judas did too. See? But when there's many divine healings down the road today, brothers, stand up for two hours and say your crops is going to burn up if you don't give them Fifty dollars yes, not a piece and all right. that kind of stuff. That's a devil. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I Amen. believe in divine healing with all my heart, but that's that's of the devil. Amen. Absolutely, Amen. that's of the devil. Care how much you can do, or how much more Judas cast out devils too. Amen. Jesus said, "Many will come to me that day." He said, "Lord, Lord, I have not cast out devils. Your name and done mighty works." He said, "If you did, I know nothing about it. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Amen. I didn't know you. Sure." Oh, brother, straight is the gate and narrow is the way, and but few there will be that will find it. We're talking about this few because we're in the last age where it's got to be just a few. Receive it, please, my brethren. Don't think that I'm standing here. I'd rather, if it be me, I'd, I, for me, I could compromise with myself and say, let's take the assemblies of God or some moving, just join into them and go along with them. But, oh, brother, woe is me if I do yes. that. Amen. 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 Woe is me. Amen. I know better than that. Amen. God had sent me to hell for doing such a thing Amen. as that. Amen. Yes, sir. If I, have some, if I have to seal my testimony with my life, I just have to seal it. That's all. Yeah, because amen. there's something yeah, in me. I can no more do that than nothing in the world. I know this is truth, and yes, I've got to stand is. by what's yeah, true. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Bible backs it up. Yeah, yeah. The organization is against it, but the Bible says it's right. Yeah, yeah. Let every man's word be a lie, and his truth. Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. truth. That's it. Yeah, stay with that. Yes, sir. Make them the synagogue of Satan. All right. And they shall know, come to your feet, and know that I love you. Because thou hast kept the words of my patience, I also will keep thee in the hour of temptation. Watch now, to show this is not the Methodist age I'm talking about. Yet it's the lap over. Look, are you ready to listen? Everybody, listen close now. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee, that little remnant, from the hour of temptation, when the church is going to come to a place where you're going to have to get in this organization or, or be, you're going, to, you're going to have it, brother. That's all. You're either going to be organized or take the mark of the beast. Or take, you're either going to organize it or go into the denomination, which is actually coming the mark of the beast. Because it's a boycott. See? Come upon, that shall come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Uh, hold fast to that which thou hast, that no man take away thy crown. Now, this great temptation, the hour of temptation that shall come to try the whole world, goes into the tribulation, just in a few minutes we'll see it, goes on into the tribulation, and the tribulation did not come in the days of Wesley. <laughs> so what age are we in? What's this door set before? It's between the Wesley and the where the church is headed right now already into the Lady of Sin age. But this little place right in here has been the last 35, 40 years has been an open door set right before the people to come in and God will take the rim and seal off and they're going into the lukewarm and just spurt them out of His mouth the work will be cut short. Up goes the church and here comes the Antichrist moving in for destruction. Just perfect faced with the whole Bible right on around. All right. Now, Here's the pairing of the sleeping virgin. Also, here proves that the last of the church ages moves to the first part of Pentecost. For they go on into the great tribulation, which shall come in the which did not come in the Wesley age. Eleventh verse. All right, a crown of life. 
uh, the eleventh verse said, Behold, I come quickly. What? Quickly after this now. See? Behold, I hold fast to that which thou hast. Keep on to it. That no man take away thy crown. What is a crown? What is a crown? It's a, it's a, it's a crown means that you have, uh, have a domain. You are a king. Amen. If you're crowned. Amen. See? And we are sons of God when we're crowned with eternal life and our domain is the earth. Amen. Make you priests and kings unto God. Is that right? Amen. So there you are. And over in the New Jerusalem, how the, the kings of the earth even bring their glory into the city. Oh, there. Oh, it's wonderful. That, if you want to take that seat, it's like shine like stars, crowns. And the, Daniel 12, 3 gives a great big uh, description of it if you'd like to write it down. Maybe we'd have time just for a few minutes to get it. Let's get Daniel what he says here in 12 chapter of Daniel. All right. Let's start the first at the 12th chapter. And at that time shall Michael, see, oh, you know who that is, shall stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. What is it? Right after this. Tribulation. Such as never was since there was a nation even till that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that is found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, and some to everlasting life, the crown, and some to shame and everlasting contentment. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness shall as the stars forever and ever. Oh, brother, there's your crown. Amen. A glorious crown of eternal life. A crown of eternal life. Twelve first, right quick before we... And I think we're going after that then. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Now, we're going to go through this real quick because I'm already five minutes past time. But you can sleep in a little bit in the morning, can't you? Amen. Mama, you let him sleep. You get up all right. But Pop's kind of hard to get up. But uh, you just let him sleep just a little bit. Sleep out real easy. Get his coffee made or whatever he does. And he'll be in good humor. Um, <laughs> him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Oh, let's just take it. Word by word here for a minute. Will you bear with me that long? Amen. I know it's hot, and you know it's hot up here too. But uh, let's say, I'll make a... He that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Pillar. A pillar or a foundation. Amen. Foundation in the temple of the house or the house of God. Amen. The temple of my God or the house of my God. It's a pillar. The foundation. These are those that took the word which they heard in verse 8 and went back to the foundation. Now, let's get Ephesians 2, 19. Over to the church of Ephesus. You know, you have to go back to Ephesus. That was beginning. Is that right? All right, let's go back to Ephesus where Paul was, the church that he established. And let's see now where we're at. <clears throat> All right, the church of Ephesus. Let's go back now and see what this foundation is back here. See what Paul said about the foundation back in that first church age there. Now he's talking to the Ephesians. Now therefore ye are no more strangers or foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built up on the foundation of the Lutheran, uh, 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 the Baptist. Uh, no, wait, I got mixed up, didn't I? <laughs> but are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone. Everything went in the door. Jesus. And he that overcometh, will I make him a pillar. In other words, part of the foundation. What will I give him? I'll put in him the doctrine of the apostles and prophets from the beginning and give him the revelation. What the prophets say about him, he's counselor, prince of peace, mighty God, everlasting father. That's what they said. The prophets, the apostles. 
And he that can overcome all this synagogues of Satan, keep yourself free and look straight to the gate. Amen. I'll make him a pillar. I'll put him back in the foundation Amen. of my word. Amen. In the house of my God. Oh my. Amen. I'll put him right there in that pillar in the foundation where he can stay right in the word. Amen. 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 I like that, brother. Amen. Good. I may act funny, I, but I feel good. All right. Make him a, either or come, make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. What is that? If he's a pillar, he ain't going out no more. He's a bride. Amen. <laughs> That's right. As Ephesus' age had, like Paul, taught them in Acts. Now, wait a minute. If you go to be a pillar, I had another scripture down here I want to get to you before we get to the bride. Now, if you're going to be a pillar, you're going back to Ephesus. You're going back to the age that Paul was in. And Paul, the angel of Ephesus, which was the beginning of the church, the foundation, he taught them if they were baptized any other way besides the name of Jesus Christ, they'd be baptized over. Amen. That's right. Acts 9, 5, 9. A nineteen five of In Galatians one eight, he said, "If an angel taught anything else, let him be a curse." Um, they were also the bride that was in the temple. Now let's get to Revelations the seventh chapter. See if they were the bride. Seventh chapter of Revelations. Now I might. Uh, I, I, we are talking here the remnant of Israel, hundred and forty four thousand, and so forth. But uh, let's, let's just skip that just a little bit and go down here about the 12th verse. Say, it's a Pentecostal meeting there. This is a people that was all... See, well, we'll start here at the 9th verse because the first is the Israel. And there was 144,000 of them sealed, which we're getting to tomorrow. And after these I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number. Now remember, from 4 to 8 is Israel, which was the eunuchs of the temple guard. See? We get it in the morning, the Lord willing. Now, he seals like all twelve tribes. Uh, a tribe of Judah, he sealed twelve. Reuben, he sealed twelve. Of Gad, he sealed twelve. And uh, Levi, and Zerbalan, and uh, Benjamin, twelve. And how many tribes are there of Israel? Well, what's twelve times twelve? 144,000. And there's all the children of Israel. John wrote them every one. He is a Jew. After this, lo, a great number which no man... Good number. Here comes the Gentile. Of all nations, kindred's tongues stood before God and the Lamb clothed in white robes and palms in their hands. That's them poor creatures back under the tide and the lions eat them up and everything else for this Holy Ghost gospel that kept dripping with blood. Thousands times thousands of little children with their heads busted into streets and everything else. There they stand. White robes on and palms in their hands. Oh, glory. Oh, my. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which set up upon the throne and to the Lamb. Salvation to our God, that sets up upon the throne to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne and about the elders, and the four beasts fell upon their, fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God. Listen, if you don't think this is a Pentecostal meeting, saying, saying, Amen. Blessings, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Sounds like they had a camp meeting there, didn't it? <laughs> One of the elders which, which answered, asked unto me, saying unto me, What are these that are arrayed in white robes, and whence come they? Now, you're a Jew. You know all the twelve tribes. Now, who are these? Where'd they come from? They've got white robes on. Where'd they come from? Not the tribe of Benjamin and the others. Who are these over here? John was so glad. I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. <laughs> it's, it's got me. I, I, and he said unto me, These are they which have come up out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For therefore they are before the throne of God inside the house Amen. and shall serve Him day and night in the temple. And He that sat up on the throne shall dwell with them. Looked like they went hungry a little bit, didn't it? They shall 
hunger no more. Glory. Neither shall they thirst anymore. Neither shall the sun light on them anymore or any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and lead them into the fountains of waters and God shall wipe all tears from their eyes. Amen. There it is. There's the bride. Oh, my. How beautiful the bride. Let's see what he said here now so we be sure we don't miss it now in the truck. He that overcometh shall be a pillar in the temple of my God and shall not go out anymore. The bride standing there with the bridegroom. Oh, oh if we could have had time to take that, I got for the book over there. Over in Revelation, all the kings of the earth bring their honor into it. That's like a, a type, the tribe of Levi. All the rest of them pay tithes to him this evening. From one new moon to another, one Sabbath to another, went up to worship. What a day that'll be. All right. And I uh, see, shall not go out anymore. All right. A pillar in the temple of my God, and I will write up on him the name of my God. Now, what's the name of God? Jesus. Amen. If you don't jot this down, we're getting a little late. Jesus Ephesians 3.15 says, uh, In heaven and earth all is named Jesus, you see. All right? All right. Now, all right, and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, I'll put on him. If you see, it's all the same name if you go already call it. See? I put on him the name of the city of my God. The city, he goes ahead and say, which is the New Jerusalem. See? The New Jerusalem. I put on him the New Jerusalem. Now, the bride or the church is the New Jerusalem. Amen. How many knows that? Amen. The church itself is the New Jerusalem. Amen. You believe that? Amen. Let's just prove it. Revelation 21, I think. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right, let's look back here. So we saw the Bible said, prove all things. Now, Revelation 21. Oh, listen to this, right? This, listen to this. You don't see what this new uh, city of His, God's name is. And I saw a new heavens and a new earth. For the first heaven and first earth was passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, Coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adored for her husband. Amen. The new, new church is the Gentile church, the bride. Amen. The bride is the Gentile, and the Gentile has his name. Amen. He took a people out of the Gentiles for his name's sake. You believe that? Amen. If you don't believe it, turn to Acts 15, 14 and find out. Acts 15, 14. If you want to turn over to it just a second, we'll, then you'll... Acts the 15th chapter and the 14th verse. I believe we'll find it. Now we're just about ready to close. Acts 15 and the 14th verse. And after that they had held their peace, James answered saying, Man and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon has declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for His name. All right, there she is. Oh. Now, I think that's just about pretty near got the last of it. And now we'll close with saying that this is He. Now I will write upon Him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is all the same. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The bride married to Jesus makes it miss Jesus. And so forth. See? It's mighty fine women in this building tonight. Mighty fine. But there's one of them that's mine. She's got my name. Amen. <laughs> I hope you got that. <laughs> She's bearing my name, so will his bride. All right. I write upon him the name of my God which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down, the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which comes down from God out from heaven, from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. I better leave that alone, huh? 
All right. Notice him there, Singler. Now, if you go back to Revelation 2.17, just a minute. Just review it just a second. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name, written which no man knoweth, save he that receives it. Don't you love him? Isn't he wonderful? I love him. the saying of the Spirit after a meeting where he had his cutting and everything, don't you? Amen. Oh, how I love to get in the Spirit then. The Word. See, the Word's fallen now. Now, one thing it needs is some moisture. See, some praise. Then it starts growing, you see. Oh, don't you love Him? Amen. Let's raise up our hands and sing it. Ah. Just bow our heads and say, Father, we love you. We love you. Oh, how we love you, Lord. We just thank you so much, Lord. Oh, our, our poor human hearts cannot express what we feel inside of us. For how you have washed us in your own blood. We were aliens, Lord. We, we love the things of the world. And we were all all messed up out there in the things of the world. And you come down by your grace and reach your precious holy hands down in the muck of sin that we were. Picked us out. Chose us. Washed us. Cleaned us. Put a new spirit in us and set our affections on things above. How we love you, Lord, in this age to see that there's nothing else in the world left for us, Lord. There's nothing left for the world. It's, it's, it's at the end time. We see by the Bible, every age is gone. We're now in the end, going out swiftly. Won't be long till Jesus will be coming. Oh, God, set our hearts afire. Don't let us stand still. I think what would great St. Paul do if he was here tonight and would see the things the way they are. How that, he, that man that had him in jail before daylight. He would be out here telling the people to make ready the coming of the Lord. In this hour, Lord, there's many sick because there's handkerchiefs and requests laying here. I pray that you will heal every one of them, Father. We know that's a part of your ministry that you've proved infallibly to be the truth. The signs following the believer. From the body of Paul, they took handkerchiefs and aprons and sent to the sick. And unclean spirits went out of them, and they were healed. Because that the people believed in the living God. Granted again tonight, Father, as I commit him unto you, through Jesus Christ. And now, Lord, I pray that you will take our souls in your hand. Wash us, iron us, because it said you is coming for our church without spot or wrinkle. That the hot iron of the Holy Spirit has pressed Amen. all the wrinkles out of us. Yes. And we're hanging ready for the coming of the Son of Man. Now, Father, we pray that your blessings rest upon us. Worship with us, Father. We worship you. We stand tonight and give you our hearts. We